Mama Annie with another episode of Stories and Songs for You. Today I'm going to tell you a story I heard years ago, in fact when I was a teenager, and we went up to a place called Horse Pins 40, just south of here on Chandler Mountain, which is known for its amazing tomatoes. Um, some people think that Chandler Mountain was an extinct volcano, and therefore the soil is very sandy and nutritious and good for growing and the tomatoes are one of the things it grows best but it also grows big trees and that's what this story is about it's called the bone tree and when i was at horse pins 40 all those years ago around the campfire one night an old gentleman who was there who played a fiddle was telling stories around the fire. And this is one of the stories he told. He told us that when he was a boy, which had been a long time ago, that he and his two brothers had been out on the mountain playing one day when they ventured off the trail a ways to look for a certain tree. He said it was one of the biggest trees around. He said, in fact, the tree was one of the last of the giants that had once stood along those ridges and hollows. He told us all the rest of the big trees had been cut down years ago to make lumber. And he said that he and his brothers had seen the tree once before they went to look for it again. Before their pa died, he had taken them there. And he told them that the tree wasn't just remarkable because of its size, or that it was one of the oldest standing, but that wedge between the two forks of that tree was the skeleton of a man. He told us that he and his brothers had stared at those bones in horror when they first saw it, until they heard the story that his father told. He said their father told them that the skeleton had once belonged to a Cherokee by the name of Tallwater. He said Tall Walker had been an old man when he died, and that one day he had simply vanished from his farm and walked away, and no one could find him. But the next winter, a hunter who was up on the side of the mountain found those bones in the fork of that old tree. And it was believed he had gone there to die. And there, those bones remained, and the tree grew around and through them. Years later, the boys decided they would go back to find the tree and see it for themselves again. And all an old timer could offer them down at the general store was to look for the biggest tree on the mountain. He didn't know how to tell them to get there. He said it wouldn't be easy. So one fall day, the brothers went back out exploring. And they ventured off the trail to find that tree for themselves because ever since they'd heard the story and had seen it that one time, they wanted to see it again. They spent that entire day moving from one big tree to the next along the ridge line. And though some of them were forked, they didn't see bones in any of them. For the next few years, every couple of months, they'd get together and go out looking while they were squirrel hunting. But still, they came up in the empty handed until most of them had given up ever seeing that tree again. That is, until the winter of 1941, he said, when a huge ice storm and a blizzard hit Chandler Mountain. That evening, the storm began. It began to snow, and by midnight, the snow had blanketed everything in drifts, and as the wind began to blow, the snow turned to sleet and coated the roads and utility lines. And by morning, they were without electricity. And of course, they didn't have a telephone to work or not. And the roads were impassable to drive as the storm continued. The weight of the ice and the snow began to take its toll on the trees on Chandler Mountain, as ice will do. And all that day, there was the almost continual sound of large pops and cracks and snaps as the trees succumbed to their burden of heavy snow. Then, about three weeks later, when everything had melted away and the storm had become a memory in most of their minds, 
they decided to go back out and look again. And they were amazed at the damage the storm had done along the mountain trail as they climbed higher, veering off north into the deep forest, moving toward the mouth of an old cave they had visited once, where they came upon a stand of old hardwoods that they hadn't seen before. Many of them were bent and broken. There, past the smaller ones in the grove, was a very aged oak that stood out from the rest. The big tree had split under the weight of the ice from the storm at its fork. From a distance, they could see a flash of white that stood out among the brown and green as they came closer. And there, where the tree had split, the wood had grown around and through those bones, and the skull of Tall Walker gazed out at them. They looked upon his remains and marveled to see such a thing, and later on they brought friends to see it as well, and even took some pictures. A few years later, he said when his grandson went on a camp out, he told them the story of the bone tree and even showed them the pictures he'd taken. One of the boys at the camp out asked the old man if the tree was still there. He told them he didn't know that he had never been back. And when one of the boys asked where they might find it, he just said to look for the tallest tree on the mountain. So, I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Alabama Annie's Stories and Songs. And I'll be back with another soon.